this is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm basing this workout and diet plan on a study I reviewed two years ago. I got a request in the comments for more detail, so I'll fill in the gaps to provide the most complete program I can in a five minute video. For a year, they tested three different blends of resistance and endurance exercise to see which combination would result in the most fat loss. And one of these had more visceral belly fat loss than all the others. The people in this group did high intensity resistance training and moderate intensity endurance exercise. We'll start with what we know about the weight training program. They did eight exercises for three sets of 10 repetitions at 70% of their one rep max. Four times a week, each workout was 90 minutes long. They don't tell us precisely what the eight exercises were and over the course of a year, they could have changed but they tested for one rep max on the bench press, leg extension, and bicep curl, so it makes sense those are in the program. For our main exercises, we'll focus on compound movements as these are the biggest muscle builders and take the most energy to perform. Starting with front squats, then moving to one arm dumbbell rows, bench press, Romanian deadlifts, and shoulder press. These will round out the compound exercises. For isolation work, we'll do line tricep extensions and bicep curls, Finishing off with the ab exercise of your choice. Mine would be dead bugs. I'm going to propose another workout that you can alternate with this one in a minute. But first, let's go over how to progress this. To find 70% of your one rep max, use a weight where you hit technical failure at 12 reps. This is the equivalent to 70%. Then do 10 reps of this weight on each set. After a month, retest. And if you can do more than 12 reps, it's time to increase the weight. Staying two repetitions short of failure has you in the effective rep range for building muscle without having to push to failure every workout. The fourth workout was a bit tricky for me because I don't like the thought of doing two full body workouts back to back. It can be done, but I'd rather leave a day in between for recovery. If we did this and resistance trained every other day, then one week we'd have three workouts and the next we'd have four. So let's leave it at that weight training every other day, but you don't have to do the same exercises every time. You could alternate between an A and B workout. The B workout could look something like this, starting with a suitcase or back squat, then leg curls, lap pull down, incline bench press, and incline elbow out rows for our compound movements with tricep push downs, concentration curls, and hollow body holds for our abs rounding out the workout. For cardio, they kept it easy doing either cycling, walking, or aqua gym, with the length of the workouts again being 90 minutes, but every day. So on your weight training days, they'd be doing a total of three hours of exercise. Now that's a lot for most people, and it isn't easy to find that much time in a day. So I'd recommend doing cardio on non-resistance training days three or four times a week. Do a form of cardio you enjoy at a heart rate of in between 50 to 60% of your maximum. This is a very easy pace and you should never feel out of breath. Before we move on to nutrition, if you can't find 90 minutes a day for exercise, then shorten the workouts down to a fit your schedule. This can be done by reducing rest times or eliminating a set. I'd reduce the number of sets on the isolation exercises before touching the compound movements. For nutrition, they tracked all their food for three days to determine the average calories consumed. I'd recommend that you do this for seven days because if you're like me, you'll tend to eat more on the weekends. You could use an online calorie calculator, but taking your seven day average will be more accurate and logging all your food for the week gives you experience using a calorie tracking app like MyFitnessPal. Once you know your average daily calories, subtract 500 and this will be your new daily total. The macro split they used in the study was 15 to 20% protein, 30 to 35% fats, and the remaining carbs. For building muscle, I feel the protein is too low, but because I'm trying to match up with this program, I'm only gonna recommend increasing it by 5% to 20 to 25% and reduce the fats to 25 to 30%. To make this work, you're gonna to need to eat the right types of foods. These are whole foods that are as minimally processed as possible. You should have all three macronutrients at every meal, including at least two fist-sized portions of veggies. These will help your stomach feel full. Then, when you add in a fat source, this slows down digestion and a portion of protein, which increases satiety, giving you a lower calorie meal that helps you feel full longer. To give you a better idea of what types of foods you should be eating, or if you're not quite ready to start calorie tracking, 
Watch this video next for a complete no calorie tracking diet plan and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.